Welcome to this video on energy flow. Here we have a food chain. It shows what eats what in a particular habitat. Now when you're drawing food chains, it's really important you draw the arrows pointing in the direction that the energy flows. So the energy from the grass goes into the rabbit, so the arrow points in that direction. But where does the grass get its energy from? The source of energy for all food chains on Earth. Uh, the sun is not necessarily the source of energy for all food chains on Earth. This is not strictly true, because there are deep sea hydrothermal vents where the water is geothermally heated. And here you have not photosynthetic, but chemosynthetic bacteria. Um, and this chemosynthetic bacteria is eaten by other organisms. So you have a whole ecosystem down here where there isn't a single photon of light. So even if a huge asteroid hit the Earth and the lights were switched off for many years, there would still be life on Earth. However, the vast majority of food chains on Earth rely on the sun. OK, let's add some scientific terms to this diagram. The plants are known as producers because they can produce their own glucose through photosynthesis. The rabbit here is a primary consumer and the fox is a secondary consumer. Uh, you can get longer food chains with the tertiary consumer eating the secondary consumer. Um, now, what happens if you get lots of food chains and you put them together? You get a food web. Now, this is a far more useful diagram because you can see the effect of a change on the entire ecosystem. For example, what would happen if the caterpillars disappeared? Well, the mouse and the robin would have, robin would have less food. Um, so they'll have to eat more insects, so their numbers will probably drop. Um, the plants are going to do better because there'll be one less creature eating them, so this will help the other insects. And already it's starting to get very complicated. But ecosystems are complicated, so as I said, food webs are far more accurate and useful than food chains. Let's talk about energy transfer through food chains. Let's imagine 100 square miles of savannah. Now, some wildebeest come along and they eat one million joules of grass. Now, what happens to that million joules of energy? Well, most of it will be undigested by the wildebeest, uh, undigested and lost as faeces. Um, and the energy that is taken up by the animal is going to be used by the animal respiring, doing respiration, keeping warm at night. A lot of the energy will be used up on that animal just moving around. So barely any of that energy goes on growth. So let's say 100,000 joules. Out of that million, 100,000 joules of that grass energy ends up in the wildebeest body. Now, lions come along and eat all of those wildebeest. Of the 100,000 joules of energy again, most of it is lost. So eventually, let's say you have 10,000 joules of energy in the tissues of the lion. So the point I'm trying to make is energy is lost at every stage in a food chain. Um, you can show this in a pyramid of energy. Each trophic level, trophic means feeding, at each trophic level, there's less energy. So given that, here's a question for you. In what way is it better to be a crop farmer, so a farmer of plants, than a livestock farmer? Well, a livestock farmer has to buy feed for the animals. You have to buy feed to, to give to your animals for them to eat. And then you sit back and you watch them get rid of all the energy that you've just paid for. They get rid of it through defecation, respiration, keeping themselves warm and moving around. A huge amount of the energy that you've paid for is gone and it can't be recovered. So here's another question for you. If you were a livestock farmer, how would you minimise these energy losses? Well, what you do is you stop the animals wasting energy by moving around. So you put them in little cages, stop them from moving around. Uh, you could put heaters under them so they don't need to keep themselves warm. And this is called battery farming. And the advantage is that most of the energy that you go, most of the energy that you buy, sorry, goes on making the animals grow fast. Um, and that translates into profits. You can make big money using battery farms. Um, in battery farms, a hen will enter a cage at about 20 weeks and it will remain in that cage for about 50, 52 weeks before it gets slaughtered. So in, in a little over a year, the hen has grown large enough to slaughter and eat. So that hen has grown very fast. A free-range hen, which is allowed to run around and waste energy, a free-range hen will grow much, much more slowly, and therefore it's going to cost more in the shops. Now, obviously, there's a big ethical issue here. 
Um, now, there's no doubt in my mind that animals that are battery farmed really do suffer. OK, let's do an efficiency calculation, shall we? Right, this cow eats 100 kilojoules, 100,000 joules, four of which are used to build up the tissues, four kilojoules used to build up the tissues, and 63 of which leave the cow's waste. So to work out how much energy is lost in respiration, we do 100 minus 4 minus 63. And the remaining 33 kilojoules is used in respiration. Now, only 4 kilojoules are available to the next stage in the food chain. Um, we're probably the next stage in that food chain um, for our burgers and steaks. So, 4 kilojoules are available for the next stage. The efficiency is the amount available to us, 4 kilojoules, divided by the total intake, 100 kilojoules. And this gives us a decimal, 0.04. And to turn that into a percentage, you multiply it by 100. So that gives us 4% efficiency. So for a cattle farmer, 96% of the energy you supply to that cow in the form of food that you paid money for, 96% of it is wasted. So you can start to see why cattle farming might be quite challenging and why meat costs so much more than rice or wheat or other plants, especially if the animal is free range. Let's finish up by looking at a pyramid of numbers and a pyramid of biomass. This is a pyramid of numbers and you can see uh, it's not really a proper pyramid because we only have one oak tree so the base is too small. To get a more accurate representation of what's going on we have to look at a pyramid of biomass. So let's turn that pyramid of numbers into a pyramid of biomass. Biomass means the dry mass of living material at a stage in a food chain. So the biomass goes down as you go from one stage to the next, um, just like the amount of energy. You can appreciate it's pretty difficult or nigh impossible to draw an accurate pyramid of biomass. How would you weigh the dry mass of an entire oak tree, including its roots? Pretty difficult. OK. That's uh, energy transfer done. If you found that useful, hit the like, uh, the like button, subscribe or leave me a comment. Thank you very, very much for watching.